Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Bish's RV in Grand Rapids, Michigan with a 25 BSDS Flagstaff. And you have to uh, uh, pardon me if I struggle with the Flagstaff nomenclature a little bit. Most of my history has been with Rockwood and if you weren't aware, Rockwood and Flagstaff are the exact same thing. And I am glad that I have access to both because I couldn't get my hands on this in a Rockwood um, where they call it a 2513. This is a new floor plan. We've had a lot of people waiting for us to get one of these on the channel. So I hope you appreciate that uh, you know we were able to go a couple hours out of the way away from cold water where I'm normally at to get you this footage today. Um, this floor plan, it's like new but familiar to me. And what I mean by that is it's a classic layout where like you have a private front bedroom with like an island in the in front of it like there's a wall in front of it with sliding doors then you have you know your kitchen and living room then a giant rear bathroom and a really nice camp kitchen situation on this one without bunks um that is something that's sometimes really hard to find the rockwood does a couple good or, or flagstaff as it were same same uh, rv same company and if you ever want to see a factory tour of how these things are built i'll leave you a link for that in the video description where you can check that out what they did here is like a lot of other people quit building this floor plan and rockwood flagstaff looked at it and said we can do it better and the major thing that they did is they moved the entertainment center so that it is pow on boardwalk and park place straight across from you instead of being a 90 degree neck wrecker crank to the left and i think that is one of the major things they did here but this is one of the sneaky little uh flagstaff micro light rockwood mini lights that has an extra little closet slide and it gives you a little chunk of storage the other ones don't it has a drop frame front storage compartment outside so there's a little more to this one than meets the eye you're like yeah it's a 26 foot half ton towable lightweight there's more there's more you're gonna like it so like like i said here this is a classic floor plan like rear bath outside kitchen well i say classic you know i'm only talking like six years ago and you saw a lot of floor plans like this they did a couple things a little different here though everybody and their brother used to build uh, like if you only got one seat in a camper, you almost always used to get a dinette. But what you're looking at here is that uh, that theater seat. Now, we're also looking at the lighter wood tone package. That's something I want to point out on this. If you want a darker wood tone or if you want a uh, like a, a brown champagne exterior on this camper, that is something you can get whether you're uh, looking at a Rockwood or a Flagstaff, which once again, same thing. And especially noticeable once you step inside them and you see, you know, you get past the exterior graphics, you go, oh, I get it. But this is really what they accomplished right here. This is what they needed. It used to be floor plans like this. The TV was mounted inside a cabinet over there where it was blocked in and you couldn't see crap. You couldn't watch your Judge Judy or whatever. And now when you're sitting over here in the slide, this, the sofa is pointing straight at the entertainment center. Now this thing has an awesome camp kitchen situation it is a camper where i could totally see somebody spending some real time outside and with the shorter size of this floor plan a manageable kind of 26 feet it's very uh you know logical i think that some people would really be traveling with this one but if you're gonna be stuck inside for a while it, it's it's not bad in here it does not suck in here we are ventless flooring um they haven't yet gotten to uh removing the carpet in the slides on these i know some people are really looking for that if you look at some of the bigger rockwood and flagstaff like uh fifth wheels and their signature or classic super light series you'll see that they have uh gotten the carpet out of those so they're working on it it just takes time we're gonna come back and look at all this but holy crap look at the counter actually let's go ahead and finish up the living space now before we get back into the uh uh you know bathroom area let's start by just opening everything up so to begin with we saw just a big old sofa like a love seat but what's cool is this thing is large enough it actually has like a full down center console armrest now in case you're kind of curious because this is a little bit bigger sofa it stands to reason if you wanted to swap that out for something like a hide-a-bed, I think there might be a dinette available here. If you're like, I don't want a theater seat. I want, you know, a dinette or I, I want a space for some guests. I don't want just a couple's camper. Well, this can be all of those things. Now, what we're looking at over here is the 12-volt refrigerator. Um, that means that this RV comes with a factory roof solar package. Now, one of the things that's nice and will supersede some of the other 22 videos that I've already recorded is uh, it used to be the solar package was standard when you got the 12-volt fridge. 
but it was not standard with the gas electric two-way fridge, which if you're going to go boondocking, it didn't quite make sense. So Rockwood and Flagstaff, they kind of realized that and they went, okay, the 190 watt roof solar panel and uh, charge controller and the 1000 watt inverter, those things are all just standard now. So basically you're kind of just picking your refrigerator as it were. Now notice because they had all the space over here by, by getting the fridge in the slide and out of the way, because usually that's where you find a fridge in a lot of floor plans. You get that upper extra cabinet space, this huge chunk of counter space, which with that outlet over there, tell me that is not begging for a coffee maker or an Instapot or something like that, like a, a toaster oven. Like there, there's just definitely some big things you can do there. And that means that they had space down below for some awesome drawer space. They like to put larger 22 inch ovens in these as opposed to a, a 16 inch oven. I always like to say you could actually, if you if you hit a pheasant on the way to the campground, you can cook it as opposed to just a pigeon. <laughs> um, over here we have, this is where the TV would have been in, in the past in other floor plans. And this is one of the major shifts they made once again is just creating a big extra storage space right here that helps privatize the bedroom. Also, can can we can we give can we give these guys a hand actually putting the shade in the entry door? And by the way, this is actually just a quick clip version of that. So if you flip those four clips, you could invert that shade so that it opens from the bottom up in a completely non invasive manner one of the only hiccups with this floor plan is i don't think it's really grandkid friendly in that all of our controls are down here where little fingers can get to them but uh once again i think that this is made uh for a solo person or a couple on the run i don't really see this being a family model so i don't really knock it that hard for for the switches being you know down lower now you may have noticed uh, the cabinetry in here, the, they do use hidden hinges, which is just a nicer kind of upscale feature. They've got all hardwood cabinet door frames. It is all pocket screwed lumber core cabinetry. And up top here, you do have a vaulted laminated roof. And uh, if you start looking up, you might notice that they, one, they're very good about a good lighting package in here. And they use a double ducted air conditioning system so that you get some really good airflow in here and Every single one of these vents can be turned or closed independently, which is kind of cool. Uh, you do have the option of upgrading to a 15,000 BTU air on these. That's something that no more than it costs, I would personally kind of like to do on almost any of these. Porcelain foot flush stool back here with some seriously fluffy, friendly uh, toilet space. I mean, you got all kinds of room around that thing. But one of the things here is like that wall, Behind the toilet, that is the outside camp kitchen. Up top here, just storage. But that, like just a giant open worthless space, like really intelligently done. And if you notice, it actually wraps around, um, technically stealing a little bit of space from the kitchen a little bit. But the shelf back there, kind of, you know, multiplying the amount of space that we have available. But what I think is cool is how like you can, the way that they have this partitioned off, depending on where you want, you know, your, your soaps and your body washes versus your towels. Like you can, I could see different people organizing this in totally different ways, actually. Up top here, standard from the factory, you're going to get a bigger vent fan uh, along with a roof vent cover, which is awful darn handy. Down below here, you may have seen a good chunk of counter space. Um, uh, you know, when I was uh, showing you my goofy face, how much room that I have in there. But over here, like the sidewall of the RV is six and a half foot tall, which normally means I can't stand in the shower. But that little vault on the ceiling, the way that they do the skylight, even at my 6'2", 6'3", height, depending on the shoes or the hat that I'm wearing, I can stand in that pretty darn comfortably. Then there's the nice little touches they do here. The little, uh, you know, shower caddy. So you don't have to bend over to grab your soaps in this bigger rectangular shower. And if you're going to be boondocking, you're going to like this guy right here. The shower miser is what means you don't waste any water right there. Um, if uh, Basically, the way this works is it recycles water into your fresh tank as you're, you know, you're pumping it out of the tank through the water heater. Once it finally hits a chance to warm up, this blue thing will turn white. Actually, if you visit one of our stores on a hot day and get in one of these with a shower miser, you might see where it's kind of like a cloudy color. It's because it's in process on getting warm enough. 
Now, you, uh, I mentioned earlier, you have uh, different seating options, but what's cool here is the sofas do come with a free-floating table, as you're seeing right there. Now, you could use it inside here for Dinofa action if it, you know, raining outside and you need to eat on the uh, in indoors of the RV one day. You can still enjoy some good entertainment. Um, RV has outside TV hookups that we'll see as we go as well. And they did something here that's uncommon, but I kind of like it. When they moved the TV, they left the electric space heat and bunion burner down here at ground level. And especially since heat rises, that will be a very effective electric space heater in this smaller, you know, size camper right here. I really do like the lighter colors in this thing. That really works for me. Now, moving up front here, where some folks, uh, like, I, I feel like I might lose you for just a second and hear me out on this, is when we get up in this bedroom, it is cool that you've got the sliding pocket private doors that all this is, is fully enclosed. This is a short camp queen, though. But they left room for a true queen, which kind of makes me wonder, uh, why didn't you just put the longer bed in it anyway? I don't know about that. I don't know the answer to that. Kind of like, I don't know what chocolate-covered chicken figures taste like, and I don't plan on finding out. All I know is that if you want to put a queen bed in here, a true queen, you could. Also, uh, if you're noticing behind me, this thing has a full bed sl uh, or closet slide. There's some really serious storage in a very small amount of space in this bedroom. So starting over here on the door side, uh, you can see how that stand gives us a drawer. The other one doesn't. You'll see some USB plugs down there. Never really fully understood why the one side has them and the other doesn't. Uh, what is not obvious by just looking at all of this, though, is like you see that set of household outlets uh, on that headboard there. Very CPAP friendly, wide open side standard. It, frankly, just a place to set a phone. Um, if you look at that, there's going to be a little sticker that says inverter prepped or something like that. This RV has a, that 1,000 watt inverter package where there are, what, five or six or seven outlets in it that are run to that inverter to be able to operate, you know, when you're not plugged into a generator or park power. And this is a really cool thing they do on Rockwoods and Flagstaffs. Anything that is structural or load bearing. So like if, the, if this RV had a dinette or such as this bed, it will actually be built out of a welded aluminum cage. So if you need to get down there, like what would you put down here? Ooh, how did I miss that before? Ugh, good little side drawers right there. Because I was sitting here thinking, you know, a lot of these normally you have drawers that open off the face of it, off the front side. That's brilliant. Because then you don't have to go crawling around to get to it. Yes. Now, one of the very few hiccups I really have with this camper is the slide close, travel and access, road mode, whatever we want to call it. With all of this stuff layered on top of one another, with the, you know, the entire living room wall sliding, unfortunately, it gets right up on top here on the theater seat. Now, obviously, you could fold that armrest out of the way, and you could walk yourself around that. You could do the loop knee walker, and you could get back to the fridge if you had to, but the bathroom door... Unfortunately, the bathroom door swings toward us and not inward toward the bathroom. I think that might be a fire code safety thing. So I don't think from the factory they can reverse the door. Maybe as a private owner, you can do that at your own risk. I can't recommend that um, because if there's, you know, an emergency to get out of the RV, I think they want doors that open toward the exit point effectively. Uh, but that being said, you know, that's, that's really the only catch 22 about this little guy right here. All right, so right up front here, we have ourselves that nose cap. What's really interesting from Rockwood and Flagstaff is they still laminate the wall behind that nose cap. It is a one inch laminated wall and they run a, a layer of radiant uh, barrier, like foil basically, down the front nose of this thing and then through the underbelly. So they're, they're, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you this is a magic Four Seasons camper, but uh, you've got the uh, double Asdell walls, which are not only helping keep the weight in check, but Asdell actually is a little bit better in terms of handling uh, heat exchange and basically heating and cooling as compared to Luon. So they, are, they have a woodless wall section, effectively, your two side walls. Um, the only thing in this RV that's actually not laminated and aluminum framed is the floor, which is still aluminum framed but it is actually a uh, tongue and groove plywood floor decking on top of a uh, aluminum floor structure, just like a big giant fifth wheel. 
Now that, this is where, like, this is one of those tricky, crafty floor plans where you look at it, it's like 26 foot tip to tail, was it 25 feet, 11 inches. Okay, 26 feet tip to tail. But this is one of those kind of in-between mini lights, which is almost an ultra, where it has a front drop frame storage compartment, a big giant storage there. You also see that uh, tire pressure monitoring system. That goes hand in hand with the factory, and that's factory standard by the way, but with the Goodyear Endurance radials that you're gonna find over here from this group. But not only that, for even better ride and handling, what you might notice is how that's not a leaf spring system. They are using a torsion axle and suspension system. If you don't know what that is, it's not technically a four wheel independent suspension, but it operates in a very similar fashion. And it most certainly uh, handles and rides better than a conventional leaf spring. One of the main things is just the way that torsion axles and suspension work as compared to leaf spring uh, suspensions. Um, if you go around those really sharp, like curly Q kind of exits, these things tend to like really hold the camper flat. Now, just for quick demonstrational purposes, I set the little side table up here that comes included with these next to that TV hookup area. You notice how it does come with that uh, outside griddle. On this floor plan, that griddle is actually designed to mount over here on that swing arm bracket on the rear bumper. Um, now what's interesting is it also always comes with a swing out two burner stove top, which I suppose if you wanted to, you could always remove just to put storage down there. Um, but it's kind of interesting that Rockwood allows you to cook like your main dish and your side dish all, uh, or Flagstaff, I'm sorry, for years and years. Uh, I, I only had access to Rockwood's, not Flagstaff's. So the, the name Rockwood is always what's first on my mind. I, I'm not trying to, not, not intentional. I'm probably going to do that now for the rest of my life. Anyway, um, we got the, the big 12 volt fridge inside. Out here, that is not 12 volt, that is 110, by the way. Um, just to kind of give you an idea there, that's not like something that should be running in transit for you. I do like though that you have that real sink with the drain. That is an awesome little touch. Of course you, well actually on this floor plan, you have two gas grill quick connects. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think this camper technically has both a propane cooker hooker and a propanus. <laughs> it's not every day you get a two for one like that. This is another thing that this company does really, really well. And, that, and I say company because like if you look at this, you see, yes, we're Forest River. Okay, so Forest River is kind of like a collection of unrelated companies. Like Salem Wildwood, that's a different Forest River. Cedar Creek is a different Forest River. None of these guys have anything to do with one another, but the Rockwood Flagstaff Division, it's like they're a company within a company, if that makes sense. They love to give you and instead of or. So like they've given us a full rear bumper and a, uh, a hitch on the back here. You know, they've, they've given us an enclosed underbelly and heated holding tanks. They've given us Goodyear tires and uh, tire pressure monitoring. They're always going just uh, a little bit further than uh, a lot of other people. Now there's a bit of uh, snow buildup on this uh, currently. I won't be able to get us up to the roof, apologies. You can see from the back though, just peeking out of that snow drift, a, uh, a Max Air vent fan cover. That's another one of those kind of standard features that you'll find on these. Um, up top, there is also a 190-watt um, uh, roof solar panel. This RV, again, includes that 1,000-watt inverter, which will be able to power multiple outlets in the RV, uh, even when the RV is not plugged into shore power, such as it is right now. Now, a couple other little things I want to point out here. I mentioned the, uh, the Asdell. You see the frameless windows on the side walls. Your slide side window is a sliding breeze window. That's kind of tricky and... A little murky to say there a little bit sorry about that you may also notice 30 pound propane tanks instead of 20s which is what you find on a lot of trailers nowadays the 20s are rather uh, especially a small trailer the rockwood and flagstaffs they always like to give you that plus one more there's also little uh small things that i don't think they're getting a lot of credit for that i noticed after years and years of touching these i wanted to point out like this giant baggage door. You know, it's a it's a big baggage door. It could very easily catch a lot of wind and slam around in the breeze. I love that they're giving us that magnet hold back on it now though. And by the way, when you get that out of the way, you see that not only does this have a standard factory roof solar package, we've also got ourselves a uh, portable plug off the side right there. So if you want to, uh, you know, park in the shade where the roof panel is not gonna do much and chase the sun, well, you could do that too. 
Kind of reminds me of my, my Uncle Gary. He likes to park in the shade and then jump out and chase my cousin Ricky. <laughs> None of these people are real, by the way. So once again, everybody, brought you this one here today by request. If there's a model you're specifically looking for anytime, let me know as I'm traveling around to our different Bishes RV locations. I'll do my best to try to identify those and get those fulfilled from you. I can't promise I can get every single thing. There's no way I can record one copy of every single model that we carry every single year. But I'll do my best to get the ones that you're looking for. Uh, let me know what you think about this one. Like I said, there's uh, the, the road mode access is a little bit of a hiccup. The, the Camp Queen's a little challenging, but... I love this space. I love this storage. The outside kitchen situation is just as good. Well, I don't know. Actually, this one has a really good inside kitchen. Maybe not quite as good, but you get what I mean. This is a feature packed little camper. Let me know what you think about it and uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button to catch us on the next one. And sure appreciate you guys hanging out with old Uncle Josh today. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.